semifinal Saturday at TD Ameritrade Park, Minnesota. They've already punched their ticket to Sunday's championship. And now the question, who will they face? Will it be the Purdue Boilermakers or the Illinois Fighting Illini? Finishing touches, getting set up on TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha, Nebraska. It's an elimination game for Illinois. They will have to beat Purdue twice today if they want to advance to play Minnesota in the championship game on Sunday. For Purdue, a couple of days ago against Michigan, it was a walk-off win. Evan Ward, the drawn-in infield, knocks it through up the middle. A 5-4 victory. And then for Illinois, guess what? Another walk-off winner. We've had four of them in this tournament. This time it was Ben Troike getting it out over the head of Logan Cleef in center field for a 5-4 victory. That game recap presented by Meyer. Let's go ahead and take a peek at the batting order. And it will be Purdue designated the visitor on the scoreboard, even though they are the better seed. And Harry Shipley's the table setter. He's the table setter, and he's got five RBIs already in this tournament. He's found a way to drive some runs in. He plays solid defense up the middle, but he's the spark plug for this Boilermaker batting order. Defense behind him. Everything is the same except for Kron will start at catcher, but everything else is the same as yesterday in the outfield and on the infield. So we are up in the booth. Brandon God Scott Pose and back with us down on the field is Dana Hughes. Hi, Dana. Hey, guys. Well, you know, these two teams did not meet during the regular season, and you wonder how much information is shared amongst the teams. Well, I was in the dugout talking with Coach Waz earlier, and it's amazing. He has a three-binder booklet of up to about 400 at-bats of each guy. And what he says, he has the spray charts and all the information. He attributes it a lot to his assistant coaches. But the information is there. He disseminates that to his teammates, and that's where they build their, their uh, ability to come out here and compete. So even though they didn't play in the regular season, no secrets to be had. That's baseball in 2018. Harry Shipley out to left field. Doran Turchin for the first out. There aren't many, many mysteries within the age of the internet with so much being published on these great publications that follow collegiate baseball. You can find out a lot on a team and, and log their games, and that's exactly what the Purdue staff has done. You know, Dan Hartlip has his crew well-schooled on the other side, 52-year-old from Hamilton, Ohio. Here's Nick D'Alessandro coming in with a 387 average as he takes the pitch for a strike. First pitch came at 133 Central Time, 233 Eastern, 96 degrees, light winds around five miles per hour. And Jim, Mark D'Alessandro is at the edge of section 108. Yeah. Mid-game. That's fine. I'll go over there. Nick D'Alessandro bouncing it up the middle for a one-out single. So the catcher reaches. D'Alessandro, what a great season he has had, and it continues there. Well, he's been a spark plug, and he's not a typical catcher. He runs very, very well, but he is in the midst of a lot of Purdue scoring. Get that ball back through the middle, and don't expect him to stay at first very long. He can move. He leads all catchers in the entire country in the stolen base category. So with D'Alessandro on first, staying put there, Skyler Hunter is the batter, the native of Hood River, Oregon. There's the number 24 swipe bags by D'Alessandro. Check back. But Purdue feeling very good about their chances for the NCAA tournament, regardless of what happens here the rest of the way. And same for Illinois, as this is hit to center field, high in the air. Taylor over. And he waits and takes. Two out. You gotta feel pretty good as a pitcher if you can get these players to elevate to the deepest part of the park, and that's what Watson has done a couple of times here, utilize that speedy outfield that he has. Nine 
96 degrees, tied for the warmest first pitch in park history. There's a stat for you, and that's why they've got those industrial fans going in that Illinois dugout. It's warm. Well, I'm still amazed it doesn't seem too long ago when we were waiting for the real field to climb to an acceptable temperature to let the teams take the field and get a game in. Wow, was scraping snow off the field at the same time. We had snowstorms across the Big Ten until the second week of April. An unusual spring that delayed and canceled, postponed several games. Feeling good right now. Everybody getting a tan. Jackson McGowan, the batter, and they'll check over, thinking D'Alessandro may be leaning. Purdue has their fans going as well. McGowan three for seven in the tournament. He's driven in a couple. He's also struck out three times. It's been a little bit of feast or famine for the native of Brownsburg, Indiana. And the 0-1 time is called since Cirillo Watson wastes a pitch. Doesn't look too thrilled about it. Four-man umpiring crew, Perry Costello. On the balls and strikes. Duffy down at first, Cat at second, Eric Loveless at third. McGowan trying to continue to improve here in the tournament, as I said, three for seven. And it was a tournament that he started with a slump coming in. He was five for his last 43. If you go back to the end of the regular season. That has seen the average dip below 300 as he sends this foul down the right field line. I'm surprised D'Alessandro hasn't made an attempt to steal the base. He's had a tough time reading Cirillo Watson. 0 2 is not necessarily a good count to run on. We think it's the 1 2. He'll be off. And it is 1-2. Why better 1-2 than 0-2? 0-2 is a pitch out count. 1-2, and two, you're likely to going to get a breaking ball, especially if the pitcher throws over. He's going to throw over and show you to try to keep it close because he wants to throw that breaking ball. And they'll check over. Ooh, almost got him. He was scampering back in there. Oh, he was leaning. He was on the move. He was going to go. Delisandro trying to get that walking lead. He does a good job of getting his momentum going to second. And as a pitcher, you're trained to get the base runner to stop. He does go. And the ball is airmailed. Cron threw it into center field. Delisandro heads for third. He'll get two bases out of that. That's what speed can do. This throw clearly got away from Cron, but. D'Alessandro puts pressure on the Illinois defense with two outs. That throw well in the center field. There's no chance for anybody covering. Massey could not come down with that. So that goes as a stolen base, 25th of the season for D'Alessandro. And then an error on the catcher, Cron. Cron and Jeff Cordy split the time at catcher, and it had been Cordy starting, but now Cron back in there today. Fourth air for Illinois collectively in this tournament. So an opportunity in the first inning for Jackson McGowan to put the two seed Purdue out in front. Up and in three and two. Defeated Ohio State comfortably 8-2 and then got that walk-off win against Michigan. Trying to join Minnesota in the championship, but early run would certainly help. 
Up and in, and that gets by Kron. Here comes D'Alessandro. 1-0 Purdue. Speed can cause unforced errors in this pitch up and away. Kron could not corral it, and once it bounds by, D'Alessandro had a great jump. It'll go as a wild pitch. Pitch was up and in. Once it gets by. That's a run. No hesitation. And D'Alessandro, the fans score so far back at third base, he was already way down yeah, the line. Yeah, he had a great jump. But you're playing back because you got a pull hitter up in. McGowan, who could really turn on a ball down that line. One nothing Purdue is now Ben Nissel comes up. Well, that's got to frustrate Dan Hartley. Give up the stolen base, throw it into center field, and then a wild pitch. Purdue didn't really have to earn that one. Ben Nissel, just a young freshman. What a season he's had. Unanimous all-freshman team in the Big Ten Conference. And all of a sudden, Chewbacca shows up. That's not going to be hot on Ben Yeah, I wouldn't have that thing on too long. Out there with the temperature going to 100 degrees a little bit later. 1-1. One, one. It's a left field coming in Turchin, and he's got it. But a walk, a stolen base, an air, and a wild pitch, and Delisandro scores to give Purdue the lead. <laughs> Illinois, the four seed, will try to work from an early one at nothing deficit. Brent Splane with that homer yesterday that I, I don't know if it's landed yet. Well, he's starting to heat up once again as he's running into a little bit of a skid as the teams have been pitching him extremely tough, but. He got those arms extended yesterday on a hanging curveball. We saw what could happen as he hit a, a long way. So Ryan Beard will have to be careful with him and the rest of this lineup. Here's a scouting report on it. Well, he will throw his fastball at 87 and 90 miles an hour. He's got a slider, which is his best pitch. He has to stay down in the zone and miss the barrels of this very potent Illinois offense. He bounced in and out of that third spot in the weekend rotation throughout the season. 15th appearance. The defense around Mr. Ryan Beard looks like this. Mark Wazikowski has become comfortable comfortable with this lineup as he should. They've had a lot of success. Well, he said defensively their season changed when they put Powers in at second base and have been solid up the middle with Shipley and Powers and Hunter running them down in center field. Second year skipper Mark Wazikowski going to get Purdue back into the NCAA tournament for the first time since they won the Big Ten tournament in 2012. Purdue has only been to the championship game of the Big Ten tournament three other times. They can make it a fourth with a win here against Illinois. Zach Taylor two for 11 in the tournament. Two. Illinois, meanwhile, they have four tournament titles. The last one that we discussed coming back in 2011. Before that, the year 2000 was their third title. And then all the way back to 1989 and 1990 when they won it back-to-back -back years. Interesting note is that Nick D'Alessandro, the Purdue catcher, his father was on that 89 and 90 team. He was Big Ten Player of the Year at Illinois. But son Nick opting to be a... Purdue Boilermaker trying to frame that, but he cannot, so the count is full. The offensive numbers, all those home runs, second only to Indiana. The leadoff walk to Zach Taylor. Oh boy, it is warm down there. Going to fall off at 
some point. Although, I think the fact that you've got it on the metal railing probably upset temperature just a bit. But let's not be too hyperbolic here. It is not 120 degrees down on the field. It might be 120 degrees when you grab that railing. I don't know. Dana, does it feel like 120? It has upped itself just a bit. It feels 123 and a half. <laughs> oh, jeez. Here's Dr. Science down there. <laughs> and Dana, I know that you just do that by feeling. You, you don't even need a thermometer. You just know what it's like. I, you know, you know how you, you know, you lick your finger and you put your finger in there for the wind. That's how I do for the temperature. <laughs> I'm special like well, that. I think I think you're off by about 28 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Nick D'Alessandro took one here off the protector. I might have got a little bit of that collarbone too. That never feels good, even with the protector on. Reached up, grabbing in pain right away. He settles back in. Here comes an 0-1 from the lefty Beard. Olin running, but he won't have a play. Good sportsmanship. Giving him the baseball. Seen a lot of people, though, be fooled here by going up too high in the seats, and then that ball starts to trickle back down a couple of rows. 0 2 pitch. Did he get the outside corner? Yes, according to Perry Costello. Ben Troike goes down looking. Nice execution by Beard as he throws this ball to the arm side on the outside corner, hits the spot. Pitcher's pitch. How do you think all that hair and that beard feels for Ryan Beard on this hot day? That's a, a lot going on out there on the mound. He's going to need to hydrate today, that's for sure. Yeah, he is. Saw Chewbacca in the dugout. We got Chewbacca in the center of the diamond. He throws over to first base. But hey, you got a good thing going, your team's rolling, you, you can't shave the beard now. Plus your last name's Beard, it just kind of all works. Goes back to that outside corner trying to get that call again. And you're gonna stay away from Bren's playing. Hey guys, the fighting line and I are athletic up and down the lineup, good speed, each guy a threat on the base pass. But if you watch Ryan Beard, the way he delivers to home plate, he crosses his foot over the rubber when he comes home. So that's a close aspect of his delivery that we need to pay attention to. Could be a possible balk at some point when he's going over to first base, but definitely deliberate enough that the line I have to pay attention to. This time he will throw over to try to keep Zach Taylor close. Taylor with 10 stolen bases. The first three guys in the order go 10, 10, 14 as far as stolen bases go. Spillane has 14, the batter now. The Big Ten Player of the Year takes a big rip, but he comes up empty, one and two. Let's see that swing. Just trying to make contact. <laughs> Gets his money's worth. <laughs> 23 homers, three off the Illinois record, set back in 1996 by Josh Kleiman. But Josh Kleiman, he hit all those home runs when the bats were a little more juiced before the BB Corps bats came into play. When it was easy. Easier. High 2 2. I will say personally, and it's been a while now since 2011, but I've enjoyed the change of the new BB Core bats. I don't know how you feel. Well, you, you played with the old bats. Well, I played with the old bats, but it didn't help me. <laughs> I'll tell you that. But a line drive with a bat is a line drive with a bat. When you go from aluminum to wood, if you can hit line drives in college, it'll translate. The guys that have trouble that try to continue to hit home runs with long swings. Runs in college become just long fly balls. 
little bit of an adjustment once you drop that aluminum and pick up the wood. Well, all the programs here now in the offseason, most of these guys have wood bats, and that's what they take batting practice with. Wood is the best way to teach you to hit the ball on the sweet spot of the bat. Taylor was breaking for second as it's fouled off 3-2. The reason being is you have negative feedback with a wood bat. If you don't hit it on the sweet spot, you feel it in your hands, and you learn real quickly how to get that barrel to the ball. You might break a few in the process, but you'll learn. And then when you pick up an aluminum after taking batting practice with a wood bat, it feels like you have a weapon in your hand. Yeah. Because you have such a broader sweet spot on that aluminum bat. And you'll see in the summer where these kids are getting ready to go after the tournament season ends, whether it be the Jayhawk League, Cape, which is the ultimate team USA. Many of those are wood bat leagues, and so kids will get the opportunity to learn how to do that and work their hands to the ball. And of course, pitchers love it. Yeah, it softens the numbers a little bit. Runner goes. It doesn't matter. Taylor can trot into second as Spillane will walk down to first. So Ryan Beard has walked two of the first three he's faced. Eight balls, eight strikes so far. And Nick Delisander out for a quick word of encouragement. But this has been a problem for Beard. 23, or rather, excuse me, 20 walks on the season. Not abnormally high, but now 22. And he hasn't forced Illinois to put the ball in play yet. Michael Massey now will bat. Massey from Palos Park, Illinois. And he takes that one. He had a three-run homer in the seventh Wednesday against Indiana in that victory. He's one for ten in the tournament. That was his only hit, but it was a big one. The lefty kicks and fires. Up and in, that hit him. So two walks and now a hit batsman. They are loaded. Nobody wants to get hit by a pitch, but if you're going to on a pitch up and in, this is how you do it. Michael Massey sees this ball come in and watch him turn away. Turn your back into it. Protect the hands, your wrists. It's a good job of lessening the blow be coming in from a pitch like that. Not ideal for Purdue as the sacks are full. Taylor at third, Spillane at second. Michael Massey at first. Big opportunity here in the first inning for Michael Mahalik, the designated hitter. One and oh. Anything you're seeing from Beard that's wrong? Well, he's having trouble hitting his location. He might be flying open just a bit, but I think nerves are getting the best of him. They're already going to scramble the Purdue bullpen. A couple of guys heading that way. Beard's battling with finding that con consistent release point. This time he's able to locate the corner, 1-1. One, one. Well, guys, as you know, it's been a horrific spring for most of these teams in this tournament. They have gone through basically from winter to summer. And I think what we've seen is some of the pitchers in this tournament struggle early on just because of the sweat that they're getting while they're loosening up and then getting out on the mound. The heat may be affecting them. So we've made light of that throughout this game. Obviously, how hot it is on the field, but that could be a factor with Beard here. He's behind two and one, 12 balls, just nine strikes. 96 degrees, 36 degrees Celsius, and it was 36 degrees Fahrenheit when these two teams played on April 1st. So, this is out to center field, and Hunter goes over. He's got it. Tagging at third base is Taylor. He will score, and we are even at one apiece with runners at the corners. pitch that was elevated that he could hit the deep part of the park but he gets the job done for Illinois to tie this game up but Beard based on the trouble that he's had this could be a great 
opportunity for him to minimize damage and get out of this inning with just a game tie. Ball is hit well as we get a look at Taylor waiting for that catch to be made by Skyler Hunter, and he scores easily. When it's hit that deep, you know you have plenty of time as a base runner. You could even wait a beat after the outfielder catches it to get home. And taking a strike, Doran Turchin. First time in this tournament that both of these teams have scored in the first inning. Purdue getting a run in the top half. Illinois the equalizer. Go ahead run at third in the form of Brent Spillane. Tries to slip that one in the back door unsuccessful. Turchin, two for eight in the tournament. He's been hit by two pitches. Dan Hartlip said a couple of weeks ago that this is a guy who's finally learned how to take walks as a junior, laying off more pitches out of the zone, more selective. time though a called strike one and two good rotation on that breaking ball from beard he starts it off the plate comes back to get a piece of it it's that slider the Tom Glavin generosity off the outer edge there one and two here comes a pitch tried the same location fouled away by Doran Turch Ryan Beard trying to keep this a one to one game in the bottom of the first inning. That one ruled a ball and now the delayed steal. They're going to try to get Spillane home from third on this. Spillane heads home. Here's the throw and he slides in safe as the throw gets away from D'Alessandro. That worked exactly as Illinois hit home, two to one. First and third becomes an offensive situation for most college teams, especially when there's two strikes on the batter at the plate. You try the box deal where the base runner, in this case, Michael Massey, leaves early. And you're going to try to create a rundown situation. And it's worked perfectly when Powers starts to run Massey back. And as soon as he sees Spillane commit, he tries to come home. The only downside is, is that speed force to throwing here. Good throw gets him. But that's the risk you'll take with two outs and two strikes. Illinois does and they have the lead. So the throwing air obviously an issue. D'Alessandro's decision to throw to second a good one or do you just try to let the runner go or is he going to bait you and stay in between first? Well no he's he's trained you you here as a catcher runner you're throwing down. You're throwing down you look and it becomes your middle infielders, or in this case, Powers' responsibility to get this runner back, but also keep in mind you're going to count on your third baseman, Evan Ward, to let you know if the runner breaks. Everything was done right by Purdue except the throw. That's the throwing air that allows the run to come home, and now Doran Turchin will trot down to first base. And a bottom of the first inning that has unraveled a bit here on Mark Wasikowski and Purdue. Hey guys, going back to that last play, this was a similar play that Purdue had go against them when they faced Michigan. And in that situation, Harry Shipley was at shortstop and he was running the runner back to first base and then made a great throw at home to get the play at home. But in that situation, I'll add on to what Scott said. Powers ran him all the way back. Once he got back to the base and they knew they were not gonna get the tag out at first base, he should have made a right hand turn towards home plate got a little bit closer to home they may have gotten the runner at third base in a pickle but it would have made it for an easier throw to De Alessandro at home plate Spillane was able to slide in safely as the throw went awry and now Mark Wasikowski just saying let's get out of this bottom of the first without any more damage done 
Alessandro sliding over to stop it as Grant Van Scoy digs in. Van Scoy just one for ten of the tournament but he can help Illinois cause right here. 1 0 from Beer. Line drive, base hit. Michael Massey runs well. Here he comes. Throw to the plate. Safe. Backing up Beard, and that allowed the fourth run from getting home, but it is 3 to 1, Illinois. Illinois taking advantage of the extended inning after they steal a run. Van Scoy comes up, gets a pitch up, and hits it the other way. Massey's going to be off on contact. That's why he's going to be set home. He slides in safely with that third run. Two out hitting and execution by Illinois and Grant Van Scoy. That's the first hit in this half inning for the fighting Illini. And three walks, a hit batsman, an air, and now the first hit off the bat of Van Scoy. Slide was a little awkward for Massey. Trying to walk that off over there in the dugout. Breaking ball in for a strike. Trent Johnson up and loosening. They were hoping for Ryan Beard to stretch this out a little bit, but he is in some trouble. Three to one, runners on the corners. Well, keep in mind what happened last time with runners on the corner and two strikes on the hitter. If you're Dan Hartlib, do you try the exact same thing? Why not? Keep in mind where they are. They have nothing to lose. They're at the elimination bracket. They've got to win two today. And they try to pitch up on 0-2. Staying put at first base, they have scored. 0-2 is not a good count to run on one two is he just explained that a moment ago so now let's see what they do on one and two Vanscoy not moving called strike inside corner doesn't matter at bat over inning over just one hit for Illinois but three runs a lot of action in the first inning Purdue Boilermakers but down three to one right now What's that? What's that dance move again? Okay. The Carlton? What's that? I don't know. I don't know. But the boys are having fun. The boys are summer. School is out. It's all about baseball. Top of the order for the second seeded Purdue team. Harry Shipley, he flew out back in the first and he takes a strike there. Looking for shade wherever you can find it on this steamy day at TD Ameritrade Park. Well, guys, Cirillo Watson out on the mound had a rough start to this game. And talking with Dan Hartlip before the game, he said this young man has a live arm. And last year, he was very solid in the rotation for the Fighting Illini. But the one thing about him, because he can ramp that fastball up into the mid-90s, there's times where he allows his emotions to get the best of him. We saw a little bit of that in that first inning, but he seems to have settled down since then. And just as you say that, a solid single by Harry Shipley. To start off the third. Harry Shipley has been a spark plug for these Purdue Boilermakers all year. He's continued to be one in the tournament as well as to drive in some runs. But you got to put a good swing on that pitch. Purdue's got the leadoff hitter aboard. Yeah, that first inning was frustrating, though, because that's when D'Alessandro got on, stole second, throwing air by the catcher, Cron moved him to third, and then he got in on a wild pitch. But Watson settled down to the second. Now he's got Shipley at first as D'Alessandro fouls off the pitch, 0-1. When Purdue played here a few days ago it was their first game ever in Omaha as a program. They had played six games in Lincoln against Nebraska since they entered the Big Ten. But 
no college World Series trips and had never made it the previous times the Big Ten tournament had been held here. So a cool moment for the program and all those kids and Mark Wazikowski's crew. Although Mark Wazikowski had been here as a player and an assistant coach so he, he is no stranger to Omaha. Third baseman for Pepperdine back in the early 90s and then was with Arizona as an assistant when they came here in 2004. Two and that just misses one and two. The man to my right, Scott Post, was here. What years were those, Scott? 87 and 89. With the Arkansas Razorbacks. That's right. There's Dad Mark Della Center. We talked about him earlier. Wearing a Purdue shirt today, even though he played for Illinois as the 1990 Big Ten Player of the Year. Ground ball to third. To second for one. On the first double play. Five, four, three, two out. Solid defense by Illinois is this double play is turned in the classic sense, but a good exchange to Massey on the turn. As we see Van Scoy keep his nose in the dirt, come up with a good feed. Massey steps across the bag and it's the pitcher's best friend. You bring up that. Olden days in 1989, we actually played the University of Illinois and Mark DeLisand was fighting Illini in the regionals in Waterbury, Connecticut. Augie Garrido was their coach. Big strong first, ba first baseman named Bubba Smith was the Illini first baseman. And you guys took him down? We did win that game. I had, our team was very good. But I remember very distinctly about that game that I had an encounter with Mr. Smith where I was on first base and I dove back and he fell on top of me. He was a big man. Were some words exchanged? No, not at all. He no. did. He was it, it was a, it was an errant <laughs> throw. It was incidental contact, but it was contact that I'll never forget because he was so big. Out to right field. This should do it. In the top of the third, and it does. So a leadoff single by Shipley. But a double play and a fly out, and that does it. Two and a half of the books. Three to one, Illinois. Three, four, five, due up. First man, the Big Ten Player of the Year, Bryn Spillane. Great A accolades indeed. The numbers, Scott, shall we say they're impressive? They're beyond impressive. I mean, he's a national leader in a majority of categories. He's a Golden Spikes Award semifinalist and quite possibly the front runner to win that award. Broke out of a very mini slump yesterday with that three run homer. Here is the three run homer. We will call a, a mash over the left center field wall. Well, his power is when he can get his arms extended, and we've seen him go deep to right field a number of times, but he turned on that pitch. He takes a healthy cut each and every time. His follow-through, he leaves that one hand on the bat because his other hand can't extend that far through the zone. It keeps going until it can. But he generates some bat speed. Two and two. The count is full. And you know that Ryan Beard will be pretty cautious. Where would you go here if you were Beard? Well, the way to get him out is in, but it's got to be in on his hands to tie him up. That's where it is. And it's fouled back. At least we've seen teams do that. He's had trouble with that pitch. But if you make a mistake in, it means that the ball's going to drift back out over the plate, and you run the risk of him doing what he did last night. And hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Another 3 2, and that one outside. So a walk for Spillane to start the bottom of the third. A leadoff walk. And that has been a problem for Purdue. If you look back at that first inning with Purdue scored three runs, they did so by getting one hit. Yeah, there were three walks and a hit bat. And any 
anytime you give a team a chance and you want to make them earn it by hitting it. Now, I'm not going to suggest that you don't earn it by working a walk as Spillane did because he fought off a pitch or two and was able to get to that count. But when you're diagramming defense, you can say if a team's going to swing the bats, hit the gaps, you're sometimes going to get beat, but you don't want to beat yourself with unforced errors. The hit by pitch, allowing free passes, let your defense work for you, pitch to contact is the M.O. of many of these teams as they come in here to TD Ameritrade. Down the line, long run foul as Olin tracked it into the corner. But we're the part of the tournament now where if you're facing good teams, you give them extra chances, they're going to capitalize. I mean, look what Minnesota did. Ohio State was able to hold them off for a while earlier today, but they still had left at one point through four innings, seven people on base. Then it became nine, and then all of a sudden the floodgates opened because that continual pressure gave way. Chopper to third. Five, four, three, double play. Nice turn by Powers at second as Spillane was sliding it hard into the bag. We're seeing two very good defensive teams, and... That's why it's going to be an evenly matched game. Massey hits this ball hard. He's not easy to double up. But watch the exchange. Warden gets it to Powers, and I'm with you, Brandon. That was a heck of a turn. He's right there on the base, but gets rid of it quickly and then falls back and takes a step back to avoid the contact. It's a good play. And now two out, nobody on. The D.H. Mahalik, who had the RBI sack fly back in the first. One more note on Brent Spillane. When he came home, it was technically a stolen base. Yes. Earlier with runners at the corner. So that gave him 15, and he's the first player in Illinois history to record 15 or more homers and 15 or more stolen bases in a season. Just another impressive notch on his belt. Two down, two balls and a strike. Ryan Beard worked a perfect second inning, trying to face the minimum here in the third after the leadoff walk. Came in with a five and three record. 35 pitch first inning, but settling in. 3 8 1 ERA for Beard. Shakes off one side, now has what he wants. And it's hit to left pretty well. This will going back. Looks up, reaches, goodbye. First home run of the season for Michael Mahalik. So he had the sack fly in the first, now the solo shot in the third, and it is 4-1 to one, Illinois. Mahalik got a pitch up, and he went up to get it. Appeared to be a breaking ball that he was able to catch out in front of the plate, but he, with that extension, created that launch angle to get that backspin for the ball to carry the location of this pitch. Yeah, he pulled his hands inside a pitch that was up in the zone. It's through it. Terry's on out. Good effort by Nissel, but it's for not. Neat moment for Mahalik in his first year at Illinois. Even though he's a junior, he spent two years at Des Moines Area Community College, so he is fired up. Did hit 18 home runs in two years at Des Moines Area Community College, but different level here in Big Ten baseball. Hey, Mike. And now Doran Turchin getting his hacks one and two. The celebration continues in the dugout. Two and two. Illinois trying to stay alive and force another game today. Beard has given up the four runs. Just the two hits, but again, hasn't helped himself with four free passes. Him. Five walks now issued by Ryan Beer. It's a 
Doran Turchin has walked twice, just like Bryn Spillane has walked twice. And the inning continues. Keep in mind that this Purdue bullpen is rested with that day off yesterday. So we'll have a number of arms to go to, but a quality one that Mark Wazikowski goes to in this situation. That great 188 earned run average. Grant Van Scoy is now the batter. He had an RBI single in the first. Check over. That is thrown above the head of McGowan. Rounding second. He's going to go for third is Doran Turchin. The throw in there. They got him. A base running blunder by Turchin. As he tried to get the extra 90 feet and he's thrown out. So Trent Johnson comes in, doesn't even throw a pitch. He commits an error, and he gets out of the inning. Go figure. The solo homer, though, Illinois leads it 4-1. to one. We've got a great class of coaches at this Big Ten tournament. All are very affable and are gracious enough to let us talk to them between each, or during each ball game. And a hit batter to start out the fifth, Evan Warden. They are known for that. Last year he got hit 30 times by a pitch to lead the nation, Evan Warden, and he gets hit there. He knows how to do that. We got to see the mark for the stitches where he took the ball off the face against Michigan. We saw Illinois take advantage of some unforced errors and reaching base in an unconventional ways, or at least any way not hitting it. Let's see if Purdue can take advantage. Power squares to bunt, pulls it back. Purdue will play some small ball, too. They'll put the ball in play and force the defense to make the plays. Wasikowski's flashing through the signs. And still in the fifth, so you're okay with pushing him over to second, trying to manufacture one run here? Why not? You're planning on keeping him there, and if you could put up that picket fence or one run in inning, you'd climb right back into this ball game. Runner going there as it's fouled off. Well, it was a hit and run, too. What tells me that it's a hit and run is the ball was clearly a ball. It was off the plate, but Powers was swinging at the pitch to protect the runner. Off on the pitch. And the swing on a pitch that was out of the zone. Powers able to get a piece, protect that runner. One ball, one strike. But we saw Mark Wazikowski try safety squeezes early in a ball game. We see him doing a lot of things to put pressure on the defense, but to get a runner over or get him in. I actually saw a suicide squeeze that would work perfectly, and he was upset because the ball went foul. Manufacturing runs, that's the name of the game for Purdue and Mark Wazikowski. But he has this team believing in themselves and playing with a chip on their shoulder. One thing that he reminds his team of, that this team was picked 11th in the conference before the year started, and they play great team baseball. They do not have one player on the first or second all Big Ten team, but yet they've been playing as consistently as anybody in the country coming into this tournament. And Evan Warden does get the stolen base on a hop throw from David Cron. Good jump. Pitch on the way and short hops. Tenth stolen base of the season. If the throw's on the money, he's out of there, but instead at second base. Ben Troike didn't have a chance as that ball got in between. Purdue has a runner in scoring position. Nobody out. And Tyler Powers, whose average doesn't look very impressive, but he's been playing much better offensively as of late. Defense has always been solid. Lays down a bunt. What a beauty. He's going to reach. Van Scoy cannot do a thing with it. Well, there was miscommunication there. Illinois had a play on where the third baseman was going to stay at home. And that was Watson's responsibility to get off the mound to get the ball. And there was a, just a second of, I got it, you take it. And that allowed Tyler Powers to reach base. There was the hesitation by Van Scoy. So Powers at first, Warden at third. 
Drew Dickens is going to come out of the Illinois dugout to talk about the situation with runners on the corners. Illinois stole the run with runners on first and third. But that was with two outs and two strikes. Just one out of the inning. Runners on the corners and the top of the order coming to the plate. A scoring opportunity for the Purdue Boilermakers. This is the longest outing for Cirillo Watson on the season as he's working into his fifth inning. There's still nobody up in the Illinois pen. No one's even down there. No signs of life. So two on, nobody out. Coming into the day, these were the batting averages for the teams remaining. Ohio State now gone, but Purdue 328. They do have five hits in this game. Illinois only two hits, but they lead it by three, and that's where it matters. Now that's going to get the runner to second. Powers could cruise in. Takes away the double play threat. That was a good read on the ball in the dirt by Powers. He had a good secondary lead, and as soon as he saw that ball hit the dirt, he was out. He was gone. Ball down and hops up. Powers is at second. Double play, no longer a possibility. Ward to third, Powers at second. Cirillo Watson hits Harry Shipley. Shipley and Ward, those are the two guys that get hit by pitches a lot. Pitch and Ward set the program record last year. Shipley has the all-time Purdue record, and he gets hit there to load the bases. That'll send everyone scrambling towards the Illinois bullpen, because that did come up and glance off the forearm. They're scrambling to go to the bullpen with a tying run on base. For Harry Shipley, that was the 75th time he's been hit by a pitch in his career. Evan Warden has been hit 38 times. These are the types of guys that pitchers just don't like to face. Now Nick D'Alessandro. Big opportunity, but he's late on that fastball. I think he was looking for something else. If you're looking breaking ball. Fastball can be by you, and I think that ball got by him. Board at third, powers at second. Shipley over at first. And the 0-1 is upstairs. Nick D'Alessandro with the bases loaded. He's actually the last Purdue player to hit a grand slam. He did it way back on April 9th of 2017 against in-state rival Indiana. One one. Upstairs two and one. It's really Watson better start to find the plate. Father Mark just hoping the sun can come through. Purdue down three, but threatening big time. Nobody out top of the fifth. Ground ball could be 2 0 -oh and went through the legs of Troike. Two run score on a costly error by the normally sure handed shortstop. It's four to three. Taylor made double play ball. You see Troike look up just at the wrong time. As this ball sneaks underneath his glove. He anticipated making that flip. It cost him. And De La Sandra hit the ball hard, but the new Boilermakers are climbing right back into this ball game. Let's see that again. Ball hit hard. He's in anticipating that flip. Ball gets underneath his glove. and Powers to score with ease. Not much enthusiasm from Dad. He's probably anticipating like you and I were, the 6-4-3 twin killing. Instead, still nobody out. Now breaking for second. D'Alessandro stole the base. His 
second stolen bag of the game. Now if you're Skyler Hunter all you're thinking about is hit the ground ball to second. Nobody out great jump by Dale Sandro and he slides the outside as well. Ground ball to second gets that tying run in and moves Dale Sandro to third. Watson starting to mess up. Hey guys, a series of unfortunate events for the Fighting Illini, and I have to attribute that that error by Troiki at shortstop to the speed of Nick D'Alessandro. He's conscious of how fast D'Alessandro is getting out of the batter's box, tried to rush that double play, and then subsequently D'Alessandro affecting the game again with the stolen base on that first pitch. And now Illinois in a tough spot. Go ahead run all of a sudden at second base tying run at third 2 1 count and Skyler Hunter with a chance to give Purdue the lead ground ball another opportunity at short this time Troike makes the play safe at first Spillane dropped the ball another Illinois air still nobody out we are tied at four and Dan Hartlip arms crossed thinking what is going on. He's looking for a new mid Scott. I think his glove broke. I think it went through the webbing. And if that's indeed the case, what a bad break at a bad time for Illinois. It was a clean catch, and Spillane thought that he had it, but it went right through the webbing of his glove. So four to four, and they are at the corners. Coming into this event, Illinois had seven fewer errors than any other Big Ten team. Minnesota was the closest to them, but. Now a couple of errors on back to back plays that are going to prove costly here. I'm looking at that bit. Glove Smiths are tending to the glove right now. For some leather to reinforce that. Alessandro the go ahead lead a runner at third Hunter at first and this ball in the air to left. Turchin takes Delisandro tags. The throw is cut off, and Purdue has put up four runs in the fifth, and they lead it by one. McGowan got a pitch that he can handle and elevate to the outfield with the runner at third, less than two out, and there is really not a chance to play with as well as D'Alessandro runs. Frustrating inning for Dan Hartlip, 13th year skipper, seeing his Illinois team go from up three to down one, and there's only one away. First base bag. Ben Nissel now the batter. Runner goes. Throw down at second. Got him that time. Skyler Hunter punched out. Good throw by Kron. Two away. That throw was on the money. Throw arrives on time. The tag applied. Second out of the inning. Purdue has storm back. Take the lead in this ballgame. Next pitch, Ben Nissel out to Taylor in center. Inning over, but damage done. Four runs.
in the fifth, Purdue was aided by two Illinois airs, and they lead it 5 4. At 70 at 70. He's enjoying that four spot in the fifth, I'll tell you that. So now Illinois will try to work from behind. Here's a guy who could tie the game up quickly, Brent Spillane. New pitcher is Bo Hofstra as he deals a strike to Spillane. So Ryan Beard started it. Trent Johnson came out of the pen. And now the third Purdue hurler. And he's ahead of Spillane, 0-2. Here are the numbers for Hofstra. 26 appearance this year. Another rested, healthy arm that Coach Waskowski can pull out of that bullpen. Spread the workload out a little bit, but he's got a tall challenge as he gets ahead of a very accomplished hitter in Spillane. Hofstra did pitch two-thirds of an inning against Michigan, but only threw 23 pitches. Yesterday off, and now here he is today in the bottom of the fifth. Spillane walked to the first, he walked to the third. They try to go upstairs, two and two. For Illinois, it would be airs that would undo them there in that inning after such a strong year and into this tournament, fielding percentage wise. Two two. A little above the belt, so we're going to get a payoff pitch. And here we go. Rocks fires that came in and found the bat of Brent Spillane. Three straight walks. That's what Spillane has induced so far this game. A walk in the first, a walk in the third. Now he walks to lead off the fifth. Well, frankly, Spillane is that guy in the lineup that Purdue circled and said, we're not going to give him anything to hit him. We're not going to let him beat us with his bat. They'll gladly give up a walk instead of a long ball. Spillane becomes the 33rd player to have three walks in Big Ten tournament history in one game. No player has ever been walked four times. Now it's the cleanup hitter, Michael Massey. He was hit by a pitch in the first, and then he bounced into a 5-4-3 double play in the third. Massey, a legacy kid. His dad, Keith, played at Illinois from 1983 to 86. And Massey said he chose Illinois because he wanted to follow in his dad's footsteps. Called him his biggest role model. Spillane goes. And he has his 16th stolen base of the season. He can do it all. He had a good jump. And clearly beat that ball in. He's in scoring position. Nobody out. Tying run. There's a lot of twists and turns still to be had in the rest of this game. As we only sit in the bottom of the fifth. Sixteen stolen bases, 23 homers for Spillane, the only Illinois player to have 15 or more in both categories. Not only this year, but ever in the history of the program with the records going back to 1976. Stretch the 2 2. Bounced in the direction of Powers and he bobbled it on the exchange. Would have been a tough throw either way, and that's going to go as a hit. They'll be at the corners. 
So important to put the ball in play. Massey does and hits it into that spot up the middle. Powers covers a lot of ground to get to this one. He tries or attempts to jump throw. The bobble. Put runners at the corners. See him grit his teeth in frustration. Massey at first, Belaine at third. Here comes Michael Mahalik, solo homer in inning number three. Also had an RBI back in the first on a sack fly. Was in the wheelhouse, 0 1. Missed 0-2. They'll foul tip back into the pit of Delisandro. The fighting Illini. Trying to battle back after giving up the four runs at the top of this inning. 22nd time they've been in the Big Ten tournament. And that misses. Not by much. Just off the outside corner, Delisandro tries to hold the frame. Just a little bit too far out. Good idea. Delisandro will watch as Bo Hoster looks to third and then first. And now Bo Hofstra comes plate word. That one sails inside a little too far. The hands locked up two and two. And again, the third to first look for Bo Hofstra. Two two pitch and that misses just outside so now the count is full we've already seen seven walks issued by Purdue pitching in this game. Close. Spillane the tying run at third bottom of the fifth nobody out. Oster's wearing out that third to first look. that he was walking down to first with the bases loaded. Not the case. Pitch on the corner. Eric Costello says that it's a strike, so it is. It's tough. He's not wearing the mic, and so we can't hear the call. And he's kind of has the delayed punch on the strikeout. Turchin the batter. That one should get the run home. We'll see. Coming in. Tagging. Olden with a throw to the plate. And we are tied at five apiece as Brent Spillane hustles home on the RBI sack fly by Doran Turchin. Hit deep enough. The line I execute with one out. Turchin got a pitch elevated and the speed of Spillane, this tiger run's gonna come home. Pass through the zone was quick enough, and what made this play really work was Olin had to cover a lot of ground. His momentum has taken him away from home, and he's got to try to make that play. And with the speed of Spillane, it wasn't to be. 30-second run batted into the season for Doran Turchin. And we got a brand new ball game. 
Five all. Ten runs in this game and only eight hits. Five errors between the two teams. The five runs for Illinois, here's how they reach base. Three via the walk, one by a hit batsman, and then the solo homer by Mahalik. Not to beat a dead horse, but as you said, give them the free bases, they're going to take advantage. Good teams will, and the Illini can swing it. You can't give them any extra chances. Be the free pass hit by pitch and or unforced errors. Graham Van Scoy walked last time up. He had an RBI single back in the first. Good to keep close tabs on Michael Massey. A lot of dirt covering the front of that white uni. Mr. Massey has two stolen bases and two tries this season. Swing and a miss. So down goes Graham Van Scoy. But Illinois ties things up. So a response after Purdue got four in the top half. Illinois gets one in the bottom of the fifth. Had not gone over four innings, Scott. Well, he goes six, and now Ryan Schmidt comes into the game. Well, if you told Dan Hartley before this game started that Cirillo Watson was going to give you six innings and keep you in this game, he would have taken it. That's exactly what he did. Now you can go to Ryan Schmidt out of the Illinois pen to try to keep this very pesky Purdue lineup at bay. They were their peskiest in the fifth inning where they got four runs. They were helped by a couple of errors defensively. The Illinois fighting a line eye. Top of the order here in the seventh. Harry Shipley, the senior from Fishers, Indiana. He's made 217 career starts and he takes a strike. Missed one game at shortstop in four seasons. That was back May 7th of 2016 against Northwestern. Other than that, he's been in the lineup every day. Delisandro waits next. Two, one, and two, and Dana Hughes is actually with Nick D'Alessandro's father. Well, there's some baseball royalty here right now. We have Mark D'Alessandro, the 1990 Player of the Year in the Big Ten for the Fighting Illini. So is there any kind of conflict you have going on right now? No, it's all golden, uh, <laughs> golden black today, definitely for sure. So, you know, I mean, when we're not playing Illinois, I definitely root for, for the orange and blue. But today, obviously, having a son playing for Purdue, it's all golden black today. And obviously you were a great catcher behind the plate, did an outstanding job getting drafted in 1990. Your son, one of the top catchers pretty much in the country. What kind of tutelage did you give him? Uh, actually, not much. I mean, if I could throw like him and run like him, uh, you know, things might have turned out a lot differently in my career. But now we're, Lisa and I, uh, my wife and I are really proud of Nick. Uh, you know, he's really embraced uh, catching every day. It's the first time in a long time, probably since he's 12 or 13, that he's caught every single day. So we're really proud of him. We're proud of the team. I mean, this is unbelievable for, for the city of West Lafayette, for Purdue baseball, and all the great fans that you know, have come out here to root this team on. So we're excited. Well, you had a great coach in Augie Garrido back in those days. What can you tell us about Mark Wazikowski and his effect on this program over these last two years? You know, when I hear Coach Waz speak, you know, uh, it reminds me a lot of Coach Garrido. I know he's had the privilege to coach under Coach Orton and Coach Lopez and, uh, you know, come from the same mold as Coach Garrido. And I think this team here reminds me a lot of our 1989 team. We finished a little short, and then we all came back for our senior year. And, uh, you know, we did a lot of special things in the 1990 season, as you would know. So a lot of similarities. And, uh, you know, hopefully they can finish it off today and we'll get to a championship game tomorrow. Well, Mark, you, you see this little mark on my cheek right here? See, I forgive you because we had a bench-clearing brawl in 1990, and I think I got a right cross from you on that day. So, you know, I've buried the hatchet. It's all it's all good now. We can be friends, all right? Yeah, that's that's true. But I tell you what, that that that, that 1990 uh, team, you know, obviously Iowa and Illinois, 
uh, very competitive teams. That was the one thing we had a lot of respect for each other. And when the game was over, you know, we left it on the field. But, I mean, th that was some great battles there. You know, some of the best battles probably the Big Ten's ever seen. So that was some exciting times and two great teams. A lot of really talented players, uh, a lot of great memories, but I was on the bottom of that pile. I don't know if that was you trying to rip my mask off at the time, but no one really knows, and nobody's got you know come forth after all these years. So, but it, those were great times and great battles, and uh, you know, you know, as time goes on, you think about those things, and uh, they're special times. Oh yeah, you relish those times, and obviously you have an opportunity to relish these times with your son playing in tremendous fashion. So congratulations. Thank you. And just as we say that, D'Alessandro hits it off the mid of Schmidt, and he's going to reach first base. Runners at the corners. And Purdue threatening to take the lead here in the seventh. This ball's hit hard on the ground. It's right off the glove of Schmidt, but once it bounds away, there's nobody going to throw out D'Alessandro as he's flying down the first baseline. Dad's reaction. He'll take it. And then a hug for Dana Hughes. While they were talking, Shipley steals second base. Purdue four stolen bases today. And they came into the tournament, one of the tops in the conference in the stolen base category. That continues. At the corner, Skyler Hunter, the batter, fouled down the left field line. So the middle infielders here staying back with nobody out. Two flyouts and then reaching on an air, Skyler Hunter. That's what he's done so far at the plate. Ryan Schmidt out of the bullpen and into immediate trouble. Upstairs, one and one. A third represents the go ahead run. And now the phone's blowing up for Mark D'Alessandro after the interview. 1 1 pitch. Schmidt for the stretch. Line drive. Fair ball left field line. Purdue takes the lead. D'Alessandro cruising into third. Hunter into second with an RBI double. 6 5 Boilermakers. She's a good piece of hitting. This is a pitch away. Skyler Hunter doesn't try to pull it, but he keeps that front shoulder in, throws the hands right at the ball, and smokes a line drive down the left field line. Great job hitting with runners in scoring position. That's going to put runners on second, third. Purdue takes the lead. 12th double of the season. Delisandro approves. So two in scoring position. Still nobody out. At one point, Purdue trailed four to one. Now they lead it six to five. Big bat Jackson McGowan before he comes to the plate. Ron goes out to the mound. And Illinois is starting to loosen their stud in the pen, Joey Gerber. Ryan Beard, he started this game for Purdue, left after two and two thirds, but his team trailing. Now things have changed. Six of those came in the first nine games of the season when Purdue got off to that 8 1 start. Big cut there, but a wave and a miss. Now 
Kent steers the block by Kron, keeps the runners where they are. There's Gerber. Now he has been used in extended innings before. She said for Illinois the elimination game. This one out to center. Taylor waits and takes as Nick D'Alessandro tags. He scores. Safe at third. Skyler Hunter and Purdue has a two-run cushion. Seven to five. Purdue lineup does what it does. They find a way to get runs across and they execute with runners in scoring position. This will hit this ball deep enough that it's going to score D'Alessandro easily. Sandro ready to tag and coming on in. Josh McGowan, excuse me, Jackson McGowan's the one who hit that ball, not Nissel. And he has two sack flies, does McGowan. And a pitching change, here comes Gerber. Beautiful day in Omaha, 7-5. to five. Purdue is taking the lead by two. And Illinois, an elimination game for them. So Dan Hartliff has to try to do whatever he can to stay in this contest, which means he's going to bring in the stud out of the pen, Joey Gerber. Gerber has got a plus fastball. He'll throw that in the mid-90s. And a breaking ball as well as a changeup that acts like a split. But he just comes right at hitters. We've seen him pitch already once in this tournament. And he showcased an excellent fastball. Be his 25th appearance as Purdue has a couple in here in the seventh, taking the lead. They jumped out one to nothing way back in the first, but then Illinois quickly responded with three in the bottom of the first. Purdue would get four in the top of the fifth. Illinois the equalizer in the bottom of the fifth, and now two by the Boilers in the seventh and still going. Infield's going to be in for the Illini. There's a runner at third. They can ill afford to let another run scored for Purdue as they've already extended the lead to a two-run cushion. Ben Nissel is going to have a tall order here. He's going to look for a pitch that he can jump on, but when it's that quick, it's going to be tough. 93 miles per hour from Joey Gerber. This time popped up on the infield. Backpedaling, Massey has it. So Nissel unable to get Hunter in from third, and now there are two out. Gerber with that fastball, you know you have to be quick, but this one just gets in on Nissel enough that he skies it on the infield. It's precisely why Dan Hartler brought him in. Now the infield moves back to normal depth. They're not away from getting out of this with any more damage. Kennedy two for three, a pair of singles. Fouled away. 91 miles per hour that time for Gerber. Third Illinois pitcher, Cirillo Watson went six. Ryan Schmidt did not last very long. And now this right-hander. Here it is, hit if you can. It's pretty much the philosophy of Gerber. With stuff like that, why not? Gerber quick to agree on a sign with Kron. Upstairs with a fastball foul back. Evan Kennedy tries to hang tough. Started the year at second base, and then as we talked about, Mark Wazikowski putting powers in defensively, moving Evan Kennedy to the DH slot. It's been a recipe for success. That one missed it, one, two. Ball. Fouled away. J. 
just getting a piece. This DH slot is the one where Mark Wazikowski will platoon Evan Kennedy and Nick Everts, depending on who's pitching on the mound. Left-handed hitting Kennedy is the go-to guy with righties on the hill. Two outs, top of the seventh. Two in, Skyler Hunter at third base. Possible insurance run for Purdue. Kennedy climbing right back into this count now. And the more pitches he sees, the better he can time up that great fastball that Gerber features. Gerber kicks and fires. Swing and a miss, but it gets by Kron. And a runner is going to score. Another unfortunate situation for Illinois as Hunter comes home to make it 8-5. to five. It's a breaking ball that's down. Kennedy can't make contact, nor can Kron keep the ball in front. It bounds away. Hunter being very, very alert at third base. He sees that it does. He's going to be coming in. And the hustle of Kennedy, he reaches. Purdue with a little more wild pitch luck there like they have with Milo Beam against Michigan. That was an insane play. That's when he got all the way to third base and then would score on the game-winning hit a couple of batters later. Line drive, base hit. Out of Golden, first pitch he sees, he deposits into left center. Kennedy hustles into third base. The throw goes there, so guess what? Golden gets to second. And that will not make Coach Hart live happy. And I'll explain why. Give Olin credit for getting the base hit. Evan Candy is going to be aggressive on the bases and go for third. But what's going to upset the Illini staff is Taylor needs to throw this ball to second base. With contact and two outs, that runner's going to get to third base. You're not going to throw him out. But you got to keep the runner out of scoring position. Throw it to second. The Illini don't. And now runners are at second and third. One base hit's going to score two runs. Normally, fundamentally so strong, but the fundamentals at times have eluded Illinois in this game. Evan Warden could get a hit here. All of a sudden, could be a five-run Purdue lead. Minnesota awaits whoever can escape today. If Purdue wins, then they will play Minnesota. If Illinois would come back and win, these two teams would meet again at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. That one gets away from Crown. Another wild pitch. Another run in. 9-5. to five. Things unraveling here for Illinois. They really are. We saw Illinois take advantage. Three runs in the first by getting one hit. Taking advantage of Purdue errors, but now Purdue is returning the favor. This wild pitch. It's going to score Kennedy. Olin now at third base. Four-run lead for the Boilermakers. Two costly wild pitches. It's the eighth batter in the inning. Ground ball foul. On the third base side, two and one. Two balls and a strike. Two and two, 93 miles per hour on the gas from Joey Gerber. It's 
So a four run fifth and now a four run seven. Two two is up and in. Three two. Side and he walked him. So down to first goes Evan Warden, and they are at the quarters. And the ninth batter in the inning will come up for the Purdue Boilermakers. In the second had that bunt single in the fifth and scored and then he grounded out in the sixth. Now he bats one inning later. Gerber deals inside. Two four spots for Purdue. That's the difference in the game in Illinois. They didn't think that they would have to go to somebody so quickly with Gerber coming in but two up and throwing. for second and now the runner breaking for home and they're going to have Olden in a rundown. Tron chases him back throws and the tag is applied to end the inning. Maybe a fitting end to a wild top of the seven. Purdue scores four times. They were aided by a couple of wild pitches. That was the strikeout of Kennedy, but he reached another wild pitch. It's 9-5 Purdue. The Big Ten Baseball Tournament on BTN is brought to you by State Farm, official insurance partner of the Big Ten Conference, here to help life go right. And by Dr. Pepper, official soft drink of the Big Ten Conference, the one fans crave, Dr. Pepper. That's what they're playing for. Minnesota is already in the championship game, and Purdue nine outs away from joining them. That went a little high to Ben Troike. 2 3 4 coming up for Illinois in the bottom of the seven. Bo Hofster returns to the center of the diamond for Mark Wasikowski. Played umpire Perry Costello just pointed up here to let everybody know that Milo Beam is out in left field instead of Ben Nissel. So the substitution made in between innings for Purdue. There's Beam, we talked about his great base running against Michigan, the ability to get to first on a wild or to third on a wild pitch when he was at home plate. Three and two. <laughs> Troike pops it up. Foul ground. Coming in and making a great catch, Alec Olin. He covered a lot of ground. That ball's in no man's land, and you got the first baseman, the second baseman coming over, but fly ball. Progression takes over, and you can see Olin pulling him off. I'll fire a coach out. Indeed, Mark Wazikowski loves it. But then Troike, that streak of 57 straight of reaching base in jeopardy. He's 0 for 4 and has not been on. And that'll be it for Bo Hofstra. Outstanding numbers for Dalton Parker, and he's brought in for a reason because Brent Spillane's coming to the plate. 
a strong arm out there to match up with the strongest hitters in the Big Ten all year. Three straight walks for Spillane in this game. No player in the history of the Big Ten tournament has ever walked four times in one contest. But if there was anybody to walk, it would be the Big Ten player of the year with a bat that he has. Upstairs, 1-0. One ball, one strike. As Bo Hofstra can hydrate and look on from the dugout now. As the back end of the bullpen goes to work. Dalton Parker got the win against Michigan. Only threw 19 pitches. One inning, gave up a hit, no runs. Big cut, as they all are. Burns play. <laughs> Sound like a broken record when I say that. Three, two. Yeah, there are no excuse me swings from Bren Spillane. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Feast or famine, this time famine. Goes right after Spillane and throws this fastball in. It ties him up just a bit. Did not make contact with the big swing. Second out of the inning. 0 oh 1 to Massey. More on the Massey family. Let's go down to Dana Hughes. Well, guys, many parents make the trek to come to these type of opportunities, but Keith Massey, Mike Massey's dad, a former Fighting Illini player, is actually attending his older son, who Andrew, who is older than Michael. He is actually playing for the Cougars of Concordia, Chicago, in the D3 World Series in Appleton, Wisconsin. So he's staying on top of this game, but he's attending his older son's game there and had a great career for the Fighting Illini back in the early 80s. That's right, Dan. He was there 83 to 86. It's a busy family, a productive baseball family. This time, a fly ball to left center field. Long way to run. Diving attempt. What a catch by Skyler Hunter to end the seventh inning with authority. Jacked up. Another look at this. BTN standout presented by Discover on the dive the captain of the outfield. See the scoring plays. Three wild pitches, three errors, two sack flies, just one hit that has produced a run. It's been an interesting day. Creative ways to score. But it counts all the same. Absolutely it does. Enjoying it here at the ballpark, TD Ameritrade Park at Omaha. Tyler Powers, it's nine in the order, so 9 1 2. Joey Gerber back out there, although he had the struggles in the seventh. Purdue 29 0 when leading after seven innings, as they are here. And he went, according to Michael Duffy. Two and two. That's close. Close enough to call. So now Powers down to his final strike. Gerber living with that fastball. Three and two. 
Hey guys, the concern about Joey Gerber and is not necessarily the activity in the bullpen, the reason for ineffectiveness in him on the mound. It's more about pitch count. Obviously, Illinois has aspirations of being able to play next week in the NCAA tournament. So I'm sure Dan Hardlip and Drew Dickinson, the pitching coach, are paying more attention to his pitch count. So he's up to full speed and ready to go next week. This Illinois team, as we talked about, with that RPI in the low 40s. This would be another great win if they could come from behind, but they have 33 of them. They have 12 top 100 RPI victories on their resume. This will be a top 50 RPI win. They were looking good up four to one, but Purdue got four runs in the fifth, four more in the seventh. Taking notes, but I think a couple of publications had them in the NCAA tournament before this tournament started. I don't think they did anything to hurt themselves. They're going to be in the big dance next week, too. Gerber has an unorthodox start, but it allows him to have some quick feet, and he's very close to a spin move, which would be a ball. But if you step off and disengage from the rubber, they're not going to call it. His biggest concern right now, though, is finding the strike zone. He walked Powers, and now he's behind two and one. Harry Shipley in the top of the order. Once again, Shipley squares, and he pulls the bat back and swings and slaps it foul two and two. A little bit of a hit and run there by Purdue. Mark Wazikowski has shown that he'll put all kinds of plays on and attempts to move the defense around. In this case, Shipley squares around and then tries to get the bat back and slap that ball somewhere as Tyler Powers was on the move. Nine to five Boilers trying to punch their ticket to the championship game as another one gets away from Kron. It's going to be yet another wild pitch. And Powers into scoring position. Illinois just having trouble playing catch right now. These Purdue hitters pr provide enough of a challenge where they will rarely expand the zone. And it puts stress on pitchers. They try to get too fine and then mistakes happen. And David Cron, it's been a tough game behind the dish. He's had to knock down a lot of tough balls. I mentioned that he sometimes platoons back there with Jeff Cordy, but Cordy's been the normal guy most of the year. Giving the relief today because of the heat. 3-2 downstairs. He walked him. So two walks to start the eighth. As Purdue looks for more insurance. Already with a four-run cushion. Big Ten baseball tournament. Going on since 1981. And. We are witnessing a game right now in which Purdue sees control with four runs in the seventh, and now they're looking for more in the eighth. Two walks have taken Joey Gerber out of the ball game. Coming in, Zach Jones. As he faces Nick D'Alessandro, who's already squaring to bunt. We got a wedding party here during the game as the bunt is laid down right back where it came from. D'Alessandro gets the job done. Two in scoring position. Are they Purdue or Illinois fans? Dillis Andrew gets the job done. Runners on second and third. One out. Now the alignment's going to be interesting for Illinois. It looks like there's going to be an intentional walk alignment. Maybe not. Troiki was around second, but they're going to pull the infield in. As Purdue's already down four. I mean, excuse me, Illinois is already down four. There's little they can do. They can do everything they can to allow any more runs to score. It looks like it's going to get the job done. Yeah, Skyler Hunter going to get another RBI. And that makes it 10 to 5. 
Hunter brings in Tyler Powers, and Purdue has doubled up Illinois in the eighth. Get a runner at third, less than two outs. As a hitter, you're looking for a pitch you can elevate. Hunter got it. He hits it hard deep into this vast expanse here at TD Ameritrade Park. Will easily score yet another run for the Boilermakers. 35 ribbies on the season for Skyler Hunter. Now Jackson McGowan, speaking of sack flies, he's had one the last two times he was up, one in the fifth, one in the seventh. Another one in the dirt that Kron has to block. We've already seen five wild pitches for Illinois, which is a stadium record for one team in one game. And they've hit two batters, made three years, they've walked four. been a struggle and Purdue has taken advantage. Purdue pitching has walked sevens. We've seen 11 walks in this game and quite a few hit batters as well as we mentioned. 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball stays low. Jackson McGowan's wheelhouse. He has driven in three. A breaking ball up in the zone. Jackson McGowan puts a good swing on it, but he waits back nicely, keeping the hands back. When you do that, they can get to the ball quickly. In McGowan's case, they do. Another run for the Boilermakers. Easily from third, Harry Shipley. Early on, it was the Illinois fans dancing around. Right now, it's all the Purdue fans. Here's Milo Beam, his first at bat as he came into the spot for Ben Nissel a couple of innings ago. If it does hold and it's Purdue and Minnesota, how do you see that matchup going? Well, it's going to be an interesting one. You can never count out Purdue as evidenced by what they've done today. But this tournament essentially played to chalk as you've got the top two seeds meeting for that one time, or one game winner take all. A delayed steal throw down there, and McGowan is gunned out by Kron. But Purdue adds on to the lead with two more in the eighth. Runs, but on just three hits for Illinois. We saw the homer by Mahomet. All three runs coming back in the first inning, and then one in the third, and one in the fifth. Illinois has scored some runs, but it's not the way that Dan Hartlip would like to see them score necessarily as far as back production goes. You have credit to Purdue pitching, but Illinois with three hits through seven innings are going to have to find a way to ignite this offense. Dalton Parker. To call the offense or keep it calm. There's a strike to Mahalik, who, as we mentioned, hit the homer back in the third. If Purdue goes on to face Minnesota, as we were talking about before the break, it would be a rematch of a two game sweep earlier this year by Minnesota. It's by far and away, Purdue's two worst games of the year. They got beat. 22 to 7 and 18 to 8, and then the third game got canceled. That was in the middle of April in West Lafayette. Minnesota hit six home runs and batted 429 in those two games. I don't. If again, Illinois is not done here, but if the score holds, I don't see that happening tomorrow. I anticipate a much more hotly contested game, especially with the way Purdue is playing right now. They're a team playing. 
with belief in themselves. They're on a hot streak, and they're getting production one through nine. Minnesota has all year, but both pitching staffs will be rested with that day off. If this holds. Ground ball to third. Will they get one? Yes. Powers was able to gather that off the bobble and get the lead runner, Mahalik. Get that lead runner. That's the most important thing on any double play, but in this situation, it's a race just to get six outs for Purdue. They'll get the first one here as Powers reaches out on that short hop, makes the catch and the exchange. And the correct call by Tim Cat. Concentration by Powers, one away. Now Graham Van Scoy, RBI single back of the first, and then a walk and a strikeout. Back-to-back -back innings of the fourth and the fifth. Snap throw by Delisandro. He has that arm. from as you said Scott being picked 11th in the preseason to having the two seed 2 and 0 oh so far and looking like they're going to cruise into the championship game if this holds the way it is now. We talked about Michigan's 20 game win streak but Purdue had a 13 game win streak. April 20th on into May and then they ended the regular season with a 13 game home winning streak two separate streaks which tied the 1987 NCAA tournament team at Purdue for the longest home win streak in baseball history at Purdue. Now this should be two, six, four, three. So a leadoff single for Illinois, but nothing else. We go to the ninth in Omaha. Purdue in command. Production right off the top for Purdue in this game that they lead 11 to 5. You will take that from your top four hitters. A lot of runs scored in the top of this order, but they've done it all year. Harry Shipley sets the table. We highlighted that in the open, and he's done exactly that in this ball game. Bela Sandro's been in the middle of everything, both defensively and offensively as well. And has the Purdue fans jazzed up? Why shouldn't they be? They're three outs away. Going to the championship game here in the Big Ten Tournament. There is a pitching change for Illinois. It's a completely new battery because there's a new catcher as well. Mark Skinesny behind the dish and Jackson Douglas on the hill. So Skinesny replaces Kron. Skinesny limited time behind the dish. It's Jeff Cordy. Normally the starting catcher, Kron getting the action today, and now Skinesny. Milo Beam, the batter, one and one. This is his first at bat. Ben Nissel 0 for 4 in the five hole prior to Milo Beam entering. Couldn't stop the swing, one and two. Jackson Douglas working rapidly. Down goes Milo Beam. Skinesny coming into the game earlier. He was on the 
the receiving end for to the downpour. Taking a shower behind coach. We've seen a couple of players that were involved in a lot of hijinks getting some game time today. Pitcher Magno for Ohio State, who had the headgear for most of the time calling plays. He was called on to pitch in a game earlier today, and now Skinesny getting the call. Speaking of getting the call, we got a new batter, Dick Everts. As I noted earlier, he and Evan Kennedy, they platoon in that DH slot, depending on whether it's a right-handed or left-handed pitcher. With the lefty up there, here comes Everts, and he swings and fouls it away. Charging Van Scoy. He's got it even with the bag, and there are two outs in the top of the ninth. It'll be 8 9 1 coming up for Illinois. If you're looking ahead to the bottom half, where Illinois is going to obviously need a very big inning. We said we feel they strongly should be in. Their coaches certainly feel that right. way. Right. It's never an easy feeling turning your season over, though, to that selection committee. Regardless of your resume. Great wins over Coastal Carolina, UCLA, Arizona, Washington. Heck, between those teams alone, there's three titles in the last six mm -hmm. years, I believe. Mm -hmm. The body of work is strong for Illinois. I think they're okay. I don't think that's going to be any solace for the Illinois coaching staff, but they've had a good year. Would have loved to have had this one to feel extra safe. What coach wouldn't want one more win? They're going to need a big rally in the bottom of the night. 0 2 to Alec Golden. Jackson Douglas looking for a perfect 1 2 3 ninth. And he's going to get it. Troike across to Spillane. Beam Everts Olden down in order. Illinois down to their final three outs. Purdue trying to put the finishing touches on Illinois. 11 runs, 11 hits for Purdue. Five runs on just four hits for Illinois. Steamy afternoon in Omaha. 4.45 local time. 99 degrees. Yalowitz to lead things off. It's still Dalton Parker in the center of the diamond for Purdue. Two strikeouts and a flyout, 0 for 3. And quickly, 0 and 2. Dalton Parker's been excellent since he's coming to this ballgame. He's really kept this Illinois lineup at bay. Purdue pitching has done a number all, all day. Only four hits for the Illini. Strike three called three times. Yalowitz has gone down on strikes. Run away in the bottom of the ninth. Well, Parker painting the outside corner. It's a strike all day, every day. And Sandro sticks the frame. Hit your spot like that. It's a good pitch. Here comes Gnezny after having a shower earlier today. <laughs> His first at bat in the nine hole coming in for David Cron. So Illinois came into the tournament, got a 7-1 win over Indiana. That was on Wednesday. Then Minnesota blanked him 3-0 on that complete game by Reggie Meyer. And after getting up 4-1 here, Purdue responded with four in the top of the fifth, four more in the top of the seventh to seize control of this game. And Dalton Parker throwing loose out there right now. Feeling free with the comfort of a six-run advantage. Two-one pitch, three balls on a strike. Mark 
Kozakowski been proving the doubters wrong all year. This is behind home plate. Delisandro has it for the second out. One out away from a chalk final of the number one seed Minnesota and the number two seed Purdue. And Zach Taylor will be the final hope. This ball skied right behind home plate. Alessandro fighting the sun the entire way. It is making sure his eyes are all right after staring up into the sky in the sun for that ball. On deck is Ben Troike and his streak, the nation's longest streak of 57 games reaching base is in jeopardy here, big time. Taylor fouls it back, one and one. He's going to need some help. Taylor's got to reach. Preserve that streak. And the Illinois season for the time being. Taylor 0 for 2, he's walked and been hit by a pitch. Two balls, one strike. Zikowski said his Purdue team came here with a chip on the shoulder just like they began the season. A fun group to watch. And it looks like we're going to see him for another day on into Sunday. Championship Sunday. Well, Troike will get an opportunity to continue his streak because Taylor walks. Two outs and one on. Here comes the sophomore from Tenley Park, Illinois. He's four for 16 in the tournament. Takes a strike. And that streak has been in jeopardy of going away couple of games recently. In fact, in his final at bat, three of the last four games, he extended the streak. Another chance to do that here. 0-1. One and one. Good pick by D'Alessandro. This NCAA tournament for Dan Hartlib in Illinois 2015. Two and one. That one misses. If Troike should reach, then Brent Spillane would be next. Ground ball left side. It's fair. Across the diamond. The throw is in time, and the ball game is over. And it will be number one against number two in the Big Ten championship game tomorrow for all the marbles as Purdue knocks out Illinois with an 11-5 victory.